that knowledge of God, we are guilty. So how does God deal with a person in a foreign country? My only answer to that is, you're not that person. And I have to say that that can't possibly be a rationale for you to make a decision about your relationship with God. Even though it's a curiosity, we'd love to know the answer. It's one of those answers we can never have, because that's not us. And God is responsible for the people that don't hear the name of Jesus from my lips. Does that make sense enough? It's not a satisfying question. It's not a satisfying answer because it's a question that we just simply can't really ever address. Uh, except by saying that you got to come to Jesus and if you know him, that's it. Okay? Now let's see. It's um, 11.34. I want to say we probably have time for maybe one more. Is that cool? Let's do one more. What is a good way to hear God speaking to you? Uh, depends on what you're looking for. If you want to hear God audibly speak to you, um, you probably aren't going to hear a good answer from me. Because it's never happened to me. I've never heard God speak to me. I've had a couple promptings in my heart. I've had a couple thoughts run through my head. I've had a couple dreams. And I've had a couple signs that took place in my life. But I would say that the absolute most reliable place to hear God speaking to you is with your eyes. To read the words that he's given to you. We're told in 2 Timothy that this book, that this book that we have, is the breath of God for us. All scripture is God-breathed, it says. And it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training, and righteousness, so that you can be equipped for every good work. Every bit of the Word of God is breathed from Him. If you want to hear His voice, it has to come through your eyes, or it has to come through the teaching of His Word from another person. If you really want to hear it, buy the Bible on cassette, or tape, or CD, or... or did I say cassette and tape in the same time? <laughs> buy the Bible on MP3, or DVD, or whatever. Uh, get it however you want. There's even a podcast you can, you can download with your iTunes, whatever. So there you go. I mean, that's the number one way to hear God speak to you. But I know the real heart of this question is, I want to know whether or not I should marry this dude. If you're asking the question, just don't. <laughs> I thought, or you're saying, I want to know if I should buy the candy apple red Jeep or if I should buy the black one. Uh, you know, those are the questions that we want to hear God speak to us on. The, the questions that you could say, okay, what does the Bible say about that? What well, doesn't say anything about Jeeps. Um, sorry. I mean, I have a Jeep, but the Bible doesn't tell me anything about it. So, so I know the real heart to that question is something practical like that. You know, I've got, a, I've got a situation. Some people even have a really solid spiritual question. Should I go on a missions trip or not? Should I stay here? So... Here's my recipe for hearing God's voice, okay? This is the best I've come up with, and there's some books on it too. And in fact, in January, excuse me, in February, we're going to be doing a series of messages on this very topic, so you want to be here in February. But this is my recipe. Number one, be so familiar with the words of the Bible that you can discern the heart and character of God. Be so familiar with the words of the Bible that you can discern the heart and character of God. The best way for that is actually memorizing passages of Scripture. So that if the question comes into your mind, your answer can be given by a verse. That's how Jesus dealt with his temptation. Be so familiar with the words that you can discern the heart and the character. Okay? Secondly, evaluate your heart and your thoughts by those words and the character of God. So if a thought comes into your mind, so let's say you're trying to decide a, a question, pray about it, ask God about it, and then spend some time listening and say, what are the thoughts? What are the things coming into your mind? Maybe journal it down. But do something so that then you can evaluate it later by the character and words that God has spoken. And then the third thing, because my heart is deceitfully wicked, the Bible tells me, uh, and if it tells me that my heart is wicked and I don't want to believe that lie, then of course I've just proven it to be right. Um, my heart is wicked, the Bible tells me, and so I can't understand what I really want 
I really need to get talking to other people too. So that's the third part of this recipe. I need to talk to someone else who is more familiar with the words, the character, and attitude of God. So that then when I share with that other person my thoughts, that other person can be a filter for me. And then, after I've done all those three things, if I can find agreement, the Bible isn't clear on this, but it seems to give God's character is moving in this direction, and then I feel a pull in that direction, and other people have confirmed it in me, then if those three things have agreement, then I can step into it and say, God is saying yes. God is saying do this. I'll give you just one quick example of how this worked in my life. This church is the result of those three things happening in my life. Back in 2005, I was really, really depressed, stressed out. I was in a ministry up in Chicago, and some things were going well, some things were going poorly. And so I decided I needed some people in my life to tell me what kind of leader I was, what I was doing right, what I was doing wrong. So I went to this group called an assessment center, where they give you a barrage of personality profiles and and they interview you and they do all this stuff to try to evaluate what kind of leader you are, what kind of person you are. And while we were there, the question was, are you the kind of person who would start a new church from scratch? And so I was praying about that because I was in Chicago and I didn't want to actually leave that church. I loved the people there and I loved what, was, what God was about to do there. And so I was really struggling with this. But I was reading the Bible and it became absolutely clear to me that God wants people to hear the message of Jesus. And if there's a city where there are people who haven't heard the message of Jesus in a way that's relevant and understandable to them, they need a church that can provide that. So the idea of starting new churches as God's will was clearly obvious to me from the Bible. My next question was, should it be me? And so I remember one morning, I woke up at 4 o'clock and I tried to sleep and I couldn't get back to sleep. And it turns out that Jen was also awake. And so I was like, are you awake? He goes, yeah, I can't go back to sleep. Maybe we're supposed to get up. So, okay, let's get up. Let's see what happens. So I sat down in a chair, and I read my Bible, and I prayed, and I got a journal, and I was writing some things. And I remember asking God this sentence. I said, God, do you want my vision for Chicago to come true? He said, yeah. Just a sense that I had, an immediate yes, was a sense in my mind. It may have been a thought, might have been a feeling, I don't know. And then I said, God, do you want me to be part of it. And just as instantaneously, I had this sense, feeling, emotion, thought, whatever it was, of no. I thought, okay, now what? <laughs> <laughs> so we made it through the rest of that morning. And that afternoon, I was sitting down across the table from a 